What's up guys? Welcome back to The Home Slice. Coming at you again from my home and my parents' home anyway, in Washington State with no gear and another very unprofessional video that will be another update on Dual Grit. Today we are tackling what are the strengths and limitations of a Dual Grit Edge? What are you actually gaining? And what is it good for? What is it not good for? Because I've run across some things that it's good for and some things that it's not good for. I've also run across some stones and some steels that are good candidates for dual grit edge and some that are not as good. And that's really the crux of what I'm researching right now uh, is which stones create an effective dual grit edge, which steels take it, and how big can you make the felt effect of the dual grit sharpening technique. So first off, I will say from my first videos, I had claimed that I, I thought, because I believed that it operated due to micro serrations, that it would work on any steel, on any system, with any technique. That is indeed not true. <laughs> And the reason that I know that that's not true is because in the months that followed, I've done a lot of testing and I've found, number one, some stones are not good at removing, especially fine stones. Some fine stones are not good at removing the damaged metal while leaving a little core, that like little dual grit extension on your edge without damaging it and making it function like a wire edge. I'm not gonna do any spoilers, but I have some videos coming up in my Andy rope testing where I test these Victorinox knives to see what different dual, dual grit techniques are doing to the steel itself. And there's one of them where it clearly, clearly forms a wire edge. And when I tap it into a pine piano leg, it just folds over and there's a, a section of edge that's totally dead while a bunch, of the other, a bunch of the other stones that I've tested create this very robust edge that loses like less than 50, 60 on the best reading when you smash it into this pine piano leg with a five kg dumbbell. <laughs> and so there is a marked difference. Not every stone works equally well. The project that I'm working on for the upcoming year is steel optimized sharpening figuring out which stones and which sharpening methods, dual grit or not, pull the best edge retention out of different categories, different carbon contents and different alloys of steel from some really basic testing, some really general testing, but in the hopes that I could make recommendations, tell you guys which stones are worth your time if you're gonna try dual grit or if you're gonna buy a certain steel, and what's the least amount of money you could spend on sharpening gear to obtain the longest lasting edge. Okay, number two, edge trailing strokes only. Uh, dual grit sharpening, I have tried it with edge leading strokes, it does not work. According to all research on the science of sharp, I had no idea about this when I made my first videos, but according to all the research that Todd Simpson's done on the science of sharp, edge leading strokes often will kind of fold and chip out little bits of your apex. So they're very, very good. They're very good at removing damaged steel, but they almost always leave a wider apex and a rougher textured edge apex. And with a dual grit technique, if you fold over that big 250 grit burr, rather than kind of shaping it and removing most of the damaged metal from it and chip it off, then you will actually lose the benefit of dual grit sharpening. The edge will be a good edge, it will be a fairly clean edge, and it will cut mostly like a coarse edge because it's got that higher apex width and that rough texture, just like if you had sharpened it coarse only. So you gotta go edge trailing strokes only if you wanna try the dual grit method. Does every steel work? No. Not every steel works. I've, uh, well, I don't know. That's, that's actually, I, I'm researching it now. I have never been able to put a dual grit edge on Maximet that functioned. It's the coarse stone, when it comes up to that edge apex, it seems to chip too readily. And that's a problem with dual grit because you need some of that moved steel to stay there. 
for the dual grit effect to actually take hold. And so the, the mule that I've sent to Pete that's made out of Maximet, the best performance I've got out of it was a straight 250 grit edge stropped on a denim strop a little bit more heavily, a, a bit more heavily stropped. And so that's actually outperformed all of my dual grit edges. And so I've sent it to Pete to see if it's any better than the Maximet he's tested in the past. And if not, then I just gotta keep researching Maximet to see if there's a way to pull a little bit more performance out of it. So highly ductile and high toughness steels are much better candidates for dual grit sharpening. For the best dual grit edge in my research so far, you need a combination. You need some alloy, you need a decent amount of hardness, but you need enough ductility for that edge to not chip off, but for that little dual grit edge sticking up to be refined more and more and come to this keen and, and mostly clean point. It's a really funny sharpening technique. I know some of you guys uh, will be like, I don't know if it's worth it. It seems a bit finicky and I'm trying to work out some of the kinks so I could tell you how to reliably do it. Because from my perspective, being able to get a magna cut mule and have it cut 1500 cuts through a rope is totally worth your time. You could save so much money on expensive customs if you could get 50% more performance out of your magna cut, say, and have it match that of much, much harder, higher alloy steel. So I think it's a really cool thing, even though it is a bit finicky, but not all steels do it. I've had problems with uh, S30V. I think those clumps of carbide make it a bit difficult to move that metal around without chipping big chunks off. I've had problems with Maximet. And I also, the, the, the Maximet and the 4V that I sent to Pete in the past, I tried my sort of Waterstone style of raising a big burr and then like alternating strokes to take it off. And with my Veneve OCB stones, that actually created a wire edge. It's not because Veneve stones are bad. They, they clean stuff up really well, I'm pretty sure. But dual grit technique is more difficult and I haven't figured out how to do it well on Veneve stones yet. But the knives that I sent to Pete earlier, that actually failed. Those knives didn't fail because dual grit technique necessarily can't work on those steels. I think it would work very well on a steel like Spider Cove CPM4V, which one of the mules was in. But the whole edge broke off because I left a wire edge and I did that because of lack of education about how to remove damaged metal. So these days I'm using a fine stone. I'm using the King 6000 grit until I find a stone that works better. It removes some of the damaged metal, but it's very gentle. And then I'm doing a de denim strop, and the denim strop has taken off the damaged metal so much better. I have to be careful not to remove the whole dual grit edge, so I only do three strokes usually, really, really light. But through using these different techniques that I'm finding now, I've been able to leave that dual grit effect, but get a more durable and a more long lasting edge without leaving a wire edge. So throughout the rest of this year, I'm gonna be testing a bunch of steels and I'll get you more concrete information on which ones are easy to put a dual grit edge on. There's an upcoming video where I'll show you some of the knives that I've bought in order to do just that in the next couple days. Okay, last thing. <clears throat> dual grit edge in my testing has not been as good as just a plain fine edge or specifically a fine edge that's then stropped and it has a little micro convex, the, the last few microns of the edge kind of convex over by using a hanging denim strop. I have a video about how to make that. If you look up the home slice hanging denim strop, you can find it. Um, but what I've found is that when I did my thousand chop test, with my K-Bar Becker BK7, I was chopping this board with a dual grit edge and I saw an immediate decline in BESS. And I'm pretty sure that little dual grit protrusion in an extreme high impact test actually folded over and was yielding these really, really high numbers. And then I saw the numbers jump back up to where they were in the 200s, 300s for a little while. But overall, not a great result, I think the dual grit edge in like chopping into hardwoods, it's actually, it's really good for EDC and you experience, in my experience, this extreme uh, change in edge aggression and wear resistance. You boost those things way up, but you give up a little bit of edge stability and durability to get that. That's why you need a high toughness steel. That's why you need, some, it seems, maybe a softer stone 
for some of the steps in the progression. And that's why I think in the chopping test, it actually folded over and then broke off. And when it broke off, then you see the numbers climb again, but it's, it's not an effective method. So I've actually switched in all of my chopping and outdoors stuff to a, an edge that's stropped on a hanging denim strop with mother's mag polish. And the results that I've been getting for that in my experience have been really good and really really fun long-lasting edges with that so if you want to check out the last 1000 chop test where I chop the this pine board a thousand times and at the end of it my K bar Becker is still shaving because the denim strop was that good with a 17 degree edge that test is right here that video is right here for the rest of you I'll say peace out from the home slice I hope you have a good one